in this video we're going to look at one of the facts about the fundamental group that makes it really useful which is that if I have a map between two spaces a continuous map then that gives me a map on their fundamental groups from pi 1 of x based at some point to pi 1 of y based at the image of that point This is going to be called F subscript star, also known as the push forward map. So this is going to be incredibly useful for proving things about functions because it will allow us to translate those functions into just algebraic guys, algebraic objects. So this push, push forward map is a homomorphism, that's kind of why it's useful. So we'll be able to translate things by continuous maps into things about homomorphisms, which are much, much easier. So how is this map defined? Well, um, given uh, a continuous map F, we get a map from the space of loops. Remember, this was notation for loops based at X on x to loops uh, based at f of x on y just by taking a loop gamma to f composed gamma some loop goes through this map and ends up another loop So the claim is that this map on loop spaces descends to a well-defined homomorphism star on equivalence classes of loops. In other words, you have to check that if you have two loops that are homotopic, then they give you homotopic loops after applying this map. And you have to check that it's a homomorphism. Moreover, if G from y to z is another continuous map then f compose g star equals g star compose f star and so so if i do g compose f that goes from x to y to z so from x to z and that push forward is the same as the push forward going from x to y and then from y to z. So this is actually clear on the level of loops. Right, so just on the level of loops, this is saying g composed f composed gamma equals g composed f composed gamma. Right, this is just associativity of composition. So this second fact follows as soon as you see that this map on loops descends to a map on fundamental groups. But this is incredibly useful, this, this fact about compositions. This is what's known as functoriality. And th this whole lemma is basically known as functoriality of, of pi 1. Not only does pi 1 give you a group for each space it also gives you a homomorphism for each continuous map and the homomorphisms compose in the same way that the continuous maps do so you really translate all of the topology into pure algebra so i'm not going to prove this it just involves checking a bunch of stuff 
checking that homotopic loops give you homotopic loops and checking that it's a homomorphism. So that's the kind of thing you should be able to do for yourselves. Instead, I'm going to look at a bunch of properties that Epstar has. So for example, if F is a homeomorphism, from X to Y, in other words, it has an inverse, which is continuous, and it's continuous itself, uh, then F star is an isomorphism. So this shows that two topological spaces that are homeomorphic have the same fundamental group. Not a surprising fact, but it's reassuring. So um, why is this true? Well, F inverse star compose F star equals F inverse compose F star. So that equals the identity star. What is the identity star? It's the identity on fundamental group. Right, because the identity just takes a loop to itself. Okay, so this proves that F star is a whole uh, as a isomorphism because it has an inverse. Now, in fact, the fundamental group is invariant under a much wider class of equivalences than homeomorphisms. It's invariant under something called homotopy equivalences. And we'll see this property, um, homotopy invariance of fundamental group, uh, when we introduce the notion of homotopy equivalence between topological spaces. Roughly, it means if you can deform one space into another, like, for example, from this theta graph into this figure eight graph, just by squishing down this this vertical line here um, it doesn't change the fundamental group but we're not going to prove that immediately um, we're, we'll have to introduce the notion of homotopy equivalence first uh, but this is already enough this functoriality is already enough to prove some non-trivial things about the fundamental group um, so we'll see in the next video an application of these ideas which is Brower's fixed point theorem